Hey, Eric. What's up, Chris? Retrograde Amnesia is a member of the Greenlit Podcast Network, a coalition of creator-owned podcasts focused on video gaming, entertainment, and pop culture. Go to greenlitpodcast.com to find out about all the great shows on the network. Eric, also Patreon. It's a website. Mm-hmm. You can go there, and you can type in slash retroam after patreon.com. Yes. And you can support us or see what we've got out there. We've got, you know, early access, bonus episodes, miniseries on Terra Enigma. We're going to do another miniseries at some point. It's going to be good. By the way, would you like to hear some hot sounds that I've recorded? Welcome to Retrograde News, a comprehensive podcast where we discuss classic JRPGs chapter by chapter, beat by beat. In this series, we are covering Chrono Cross. Tonight, we really need a boat, and we hope someone that gives us a boat. That's all I got. My name is Chris. I'm joined tonight by Eric. Hey, Eric. Hey, Chris. You want to buy a boat? Uh, I don't want to buy a boat. Uh, I, I want somebody to give me a boat so I can traverse the world. Not this world. The home world. We are also joined tonight by The Real Net, a collective of patrons who are listening to us record live. You too can join us at patreon.com slash retro AM. We are also joined by The Fake Net, our post-production AI companion and former recruitable character in Jade Cocoon. <laughs> Initializing Fake Net. Not a lot of people know that because it absolutely is not true and it disrespects real minions like Hellhound, Neon Demon, Valkyrie Dreg, and Twingo. My sweet boy Twingo. Hello, Ficknet. Hello, Crisp. Jade Cocoon, is that a Bioware game? Ubisoft. Ubisoft. Genki. It was made by Genki. My god. Why do I think it was a Bioware game? Because you're an idiot. You're thinking of Jade Empire. Jade Empire, yeah, same thing, right? No. Jesus. You're both just tossing out lies and we're not even three minutes in. So, uh, we're off. We're links. We're still links, by the way. Still links, man. Still links. Not used to it yet. No, it's, it's kind of weird still. I'm rocking with Radius... And Harley at this point. How about you? Also Radius and Harley. Okay. I feel like I need to keep Radius around because Radius keeps having things to say. He said things to say and then you look at the rest of your lineup and you're like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. It's like fun guy. I mean, I, I bet Zappa's pretty cool. Yeah. But I feel like Zappa's already contributing to our calls by yeah. doing the upgrade shit. He's a smith. You don't want to... We're not paying any of these people. Like yeah. You want to just use their talents for what they're good at. It still makes me wish I had an airship or somewhere for people to congregate. Yeah. To just have everyone else. But I, I didn't think about that. Like, can you imagine beating ass with Zappa all day? Then <laughs> at night you're like, hey, man, uh, we really need some bangles made. <laughs> yeah. So if you could just like, when you're, when you're finished eating, though, just get up and we can, we can, you know. He'd just be like, fuck it, go ask the other one. Right. <laughs> He's still alive, right? Uh, so uh, we're heading to Viper Manor, right? Yes. We've been told by all the poor soldiers that Norris is the one in charge of this area and this occupation, poor's occupation of Termina. Yes, those poor, poor soldiers. Yes, yes, indeed. So we head to Viper Manor, and this place has seen better days. On the map, it's all fucked up, even yeah. on the world map. They're yeah. just birds chirping as you approach that front gate. Was this place destroyed by the cannons? That's a good question. I think the it answer has to be, is right? probably yes, right? Or what if it's like some fall of House of Usher shit? Yeah. Or where some, it just <laughs> fell into the earth. Maybe somebody just used free fall on it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> just shot it up into the sky. I wonder if elements only affect organic material because it clearly like makes, when you use free fall on like those gravity spells, it yeah. distorts earth time. Yeah, it's weird. Another question, Eric, I have for you. Wouldn't it have been kind of cool if we would have got here right at the moment that Poor was, was taking over Termina? Mm-hmm. Like if we would have had some sort of participatory involvement in the takeover, like we got to fight some guys or something. So you want to be in the apocalypse, not in the post-apocalypse. Yeah, I think that would be kind of cool because this game is, especially at this point in time, this game is lacking any mechanical engagement from a battle perspective. We haven't had too many battles. I mean, we beat the shit out of Radius and a couple of things in the Temporal Vortex, Mm. but you go a long fucking time without fighting anything at this next, in these next couple sections. My logical brain in that just wonders if it would be hard to repeatedly change the pre-rendered background to reflect a decimated Viper Manor in real time. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. The soldiers this time tell me that Sir Norris has arrived and please come in. The others say Norris is in the basement. Dude, the front gate is fucked up. Yeah, it's bad. He calls him Sir Norris. Do they have a knight system? I'm not sure. I think it maybe just is like, like an, an honorific kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. 
So holy shit, man, the main structure is ultra decayed. The entire building is basically rubble. And with all the grass moss growing everywhere, it looks like it's been this way for a million years. Yes. Very last of us too. Very life after people. Mm -hmm. My guy Radius has a moment. Yeah, he does. Uh, he walks up to the, what, the, the rubble that's in front of the entrance of Viper Manor and yes. says, I believe it has been four years since I retired from the Dragoons. He can't believe. No. Sigh. So, he says, time sure does fly. I was shocked to hear of Dario's death three years ago. And now the general and the others are missing. The manor is in shambles. I took the liberty of conducting my own investigation, but I have discovered nothing. All I know is that a man named Lynx, which is us, is weird. Well, I believe his implication, he knows that we're not Lynx. Yes, yes. Lynx approached the general and has involved him in some kind of incident. The only difference with the other world you talk about is something that happened to the general three years ago, which confirms our theory that Lynx is tinkering with politics and loyalties behind the scenes in both worlds and doing it differently in order to have the scenarios play out differently, I, I guess, for his own ends. I secretly hope that Lynx is doing this in more than one world and we're, or more than two, and we're just seeing two of them. Yeah. So next, Harley, who I have in my party. Yes, me too. Says she doesn't know anything who is not involved in this plan, which is bullshit. I think you're right. Like, unless it's not true that she's actually Lynx's right-hand person. Like, that, that'd be a clever ruse, wouldn't it? It's like she, well, she works for Lynx, but she doesn't necessarily have a hand in the plans. She's just there to fuck with people or follow Surge. Or maybe she's spying on Surge or spy, spying on Kid or something of that nature. I try to walk in the front door and there is no front door. Yes. A soldier out front says they sent some men to El Nido Triangle to investigate a mysterious beam of light. Yes. He's, he's also heard there is a monster atop Sky Dragon Isle. Yeah. He wants to know what's up with this El Nido place. And Chris, those two events are later connected. Yes, indeed. There is a couple of hints that remind us we should go to Sky Dragon Isle. And that's one thing this game does pretty well, is that it has multiple NPCs that will give you hints about where you should go yeah. to do side side missions. Uh, so I appreciated that. I think we're still years before, at least on consoles, like an actual list of side missions. Yeah. Like a mission list. Do you talk to the soldier on top of the ruins who was all the way up there? Oh, no, I couldn't figure out how to do that. He says, well, you get up, I forgot how I got up there. We get up there and he goes, hey, uh, this is unstable. And then he asks us to enter via the basement. So we're going to go in through the well. Yeah, that's the same entrance as the Nikki route. Yes, that's yes. the entrance that I took. Yes. So you get in there and there's that water rushing sound effect. There's no music. More soldiers are around saying, please enter through here, but there is no one here. What the fuck are they talking about? Yeah. Is this a joke? I had a hard time finding this Where too. in the hell do I go? Oh no, I'm back in Shadow Forest as Forest of Illusion starts playing. Yes. You're not supposed to go that way. You're supposed to climb back up the mountain and go down this little hole area. Yeah, it's like that, right next to that, yeah. that ladder. You get to take like a slight U-turn, and then you make your way to the sewer area below Viper Manor. These sewers imply the existence of plumbing, Eric. This is true. So does Viper Manor have toilets? I don't think so. We didn't see any. Yeah, but that doesn't mean... I mean, maybe the... What if it's just for, like, irrigation and water recycling? Like, they haven't figured out that the turd goes in the water yet to get it taken away. Okay, and may, so you could you could be right. Maybe this is some sort of irrigation. It's like, all the other toilets we found so far are either chamber pots or, like, suspicious toilets. Yeah, but isn't that how they, what they used to do with, with chamber pots is just throw them in, into the into the sewers? Oh, geez, Chris. I was born in 1983. I, I mean, they, they have, like, like, history books and stuff, you know? <laughs> Those aren't right. <laughs> okay. Those aren't correct. So we're... In here, and is this part of the manor? What is this? It's a bunch of square waterways. You can push barrels in the water to create a bridge so Lynx can hop on foot long distances to make it to the other side, which is hilarious. Yeah, I found a mithril helmet down here. Yes. Which that is, is our current like tier of yeah, of, of uh, Our items. tier of gear. Yes. I guess song out of that, Chris. Mm -hmm. We climb a ladder, which eventually has Norris at the top of it. Yes. You, we arrive in that like dungeon area, which we've seen in the other Viper Manor. And but there's still some rubble blocking the stairs, yes. so we can't go explore the actual Viper Manor. In this right, world. but that door that guy was guarding went down to this. Yes. So there's still no music. There's just the noise of our footsteps. There are only three cells down here. Two are empty, and one is a treasure chest. All of them are locked. Yes. Is this something we're going to be able to come back to? I don't know. I haven't come back. I meant to come back here and do more of that barrel stuff down there. That guy was in the way, but yes, I didn't do it. There's one room at the end, presumably an interrogation room. Yes. Norris is inside. Yes. Inside that door, we meet swoopy-haired Norris, and he greets us as Sir Lynx. There are a bunch of wine cask slots, and then this 
room is like 10 times the size you expect. And it's a torture when room. When you walk in there, yeah. And this yeah. actually backs up my theory there's that... There's a drain. That, <laughs> yeah, there's a blood drain. Wow. that That's what the sewers are for. for yeah, there the you people go. to execute in here. Wash the blood. The existence of this torture room uh, backs up my theory that General Viper is a neocon. Okay. So, totally. Yeah. There's the noise of crackling flames the entire time. The back wall is lined with a bunch of candles. There's also a massive torch in the center. Then we see Norris. The lighting, oh, sorry. The lighting is terrific it in is here. It is wonderful. I don't know if it's actually shaded or what, but the lighting is great. Yeah, there's like, what, three or four different light sources? Yeah, uh, and like some are flickering in real time. Yeah, and that whole table full of lit candles that are kind of sitting behind Norris really this gives is, off different It's one of shades. the secret most competent looking areas in this game so far. Yeah, I know, and it's, we're probably only going to go here like once or twice. Yep. So Norris's blonde hair is parted like an asshole over his baby blue eyes. <laughs> yeah. He has a lot of emotes, too. He shakes his head, and he notes that the manor is in shambles, and there's no sign of the general or others. But you're right. He recognizes Lynx. He says it's been a while, and he starts talking to Lynx like he's his boss or some shit. Yeah, which Like I, nothing ever happens. He's like, oh, sir, hey, you're here. Great. What's up, dude? He says they haven't not found the frozen flame here, which I guess that's the whole reason for this occup- yeah. occupation was to find the frozen flame. And you imagine Norris's boss, like Norris requisitioned all these resources, and it's like, oh, we killed the whole manor. It's not yeah. even here. So if if Viper and Karsh and them disappeared three years ago, four years ago, three or four years ago, whatever it was, like, mm. does that mean that the manor was bombarded by those cannons like three or four years ago, That's or did that just recently happened? I want to say it's somewhat recent because I'd imagine it took word to get over to Poor that the manor really was abandoned and like not just some ruse or some shit like that. You know how slow, like colonizing forces emigrate over the other side without aircraft carriers and shit. Yeah, somebody in the, the other Viper Manor was talking about how it's supposed to be some impenetrable fortress, mm-hmm. and so perhaps the... the well, no, yeah, but we, the, we could infiltrate it from three separate ways well, three different dipshits, Chris, that, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that's neither here nor there, but perhaps that's why they just started shooting cannons at it, so they can, they're like, oh, wait, they're not shooting back, there's no one here. Who knows? So he asks us for some reason if we really are Sir Lynx. We yeah, seem different than he remembers. That's out of nowhere. Like, I could understand being around somebody who you're familiar with and being like are you okay you seem a little bit off today but to be like are you really are you really eric yeah it's weird uh radius then steps forward he destroys any tactical advantage we may have he spills the beans why are you doing that confirms we're not links norris actually is very pleased to meet one of the former devas of the acacia dragoons indicating that radius has unique dialogue here it's funny, like, after Radius tells him that, Norris is like, well, who the fuck are you? Yeah. And I think he's talking to Lynx, but then Radius answers, <laughs> yeah. says that he's a dragoon, like you said. Like, you can believe this shit if you want, and Norris is like, this is this is strange. He I, clicks I, his heels when he says it's an honor to meet Radius, like he gets yeah. in full stance and formation and shit. Weird. Norris decides that he's not going to rule anything out here. Yeah. And then Radius asks for some information on the disappearance of the general. All these guys believe that dead boys can travel across dimensions, but not this. Yeah, it's weird. Norris, who seems kind of decent in yeah. terms of the way he's treating us. He's a Black Wind member, uh, Chris. D- yes, despite being this, you know, a high-ranking military asshole, he's not treating us like like dirt. Well, I assume at this point the Dragoons have surrendered whatever is left. Like, Glenn is apparently out there somewhere, but, you know, once the force is surrendered, you treat your enemies like, you know, not opponents, but just polite adversaries. So does Norris have a code here? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And is that code dependent upon... I, I, I guess the answer is no, but... It seems like that code is dependent upon the existence or the, the presence of Radius here. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure the conversation continues the same way if you don't have Radius. I wonder if Radius steps in. That's true. Good question. He does that later in the game quite a bit. Yes. So he just, like, decides that he's going to tell us what he knows. And we didn't even have to prove our value through combat like we have had to do on many other occasions in this game. Yeah. So he's going to, Norris is going to explain all this shit via flashback over the world map, right? Yes, a zoom out shot, music reminiscing unerasable memory plays again yes reminisce enduring thoughts so norris says it was lynx who approached them about the existence of the frozen flame in el nido yes being from the main continent what they always doubted its existence so poor is from the main continent those people yeah that was a, a location in colonel trigger which is okay. a, a random village uh, which apparently has built up a military over the course of the past like 20 years yes but you're still hungry yes norris was sent to el nido as a spy he narrowed the location down to viper manor yes but it appeared as though General Viper, who lives here, moron, and his men were in search of it as well. Question real quick. Yeah. Is, is Norris the chef guy in the kitchen? Remember where there was a spy in the other world? Oh, that's a good question. So Maybe. Uh, yeah. That, 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 that's an interesting parallel. I didn't think about that. I'm going to say no because that guy was grossly incompetent and got trapped in an that's animal true. cage. But maybe... Maybe, maybe that Norris is, is an idiot. Well, that, that's true. The other Norris could be an idiot or he could be... It could be part of his ruse. Hmm. 
Eventually, Norris was called back to poor, but then he heard Viper disappeared and the manor was destroyed. So I guess that confirms the manor was destroyed not by poor cannons. Ah, right? interesting. Okay. Recently, they found good evidence that Viper and his men were actually headed to the Dead Sea. Norris confirms this place used to be called the Sea of Eden. They investigated but could find no entrance. And flashback. Yes. Norris then confirms it was Lynx who wished to change the world using the frozen flame. Mm-hmm. Harley, who, by the way, I thought was Lynx's right-hand woman, <laughs> yes. leaps in and says, oh, la, la, or some shit. Yeah. Uh, she says, such grand dreams. Nights into dreams, Monsieur Lynx. Yeah, th- this is interesting, too. Like, does, does Harley even report to the real Lynx? It's getting question. weird because we've never Who's seen them, we've never seen them in the same place together. Right. Very odd. That would be I don't think it, I don't think this is the case, but if Harley never even worked for him, period. Could be the case. I don't know. Really I don't remember much about how this game wraps up. So Radius tells her to hold her tongue for some reason. And then they banter a little bit more and then resolve to head to the Dead Sea. He also said that how the Dead Sea was called the Sea of Eden until three years ago. Was that when Dario died? I th- yeah, that the, Dario's been missing for three years. So okay. I think that's part of it. They're not really clear on, like, because remember, Sir, uh, yeah, Serge's mom talked about how it was used to be called one or the other, and, and they're not really clear on, like, what made the change. Maybe it was the fact that a bunch of people died there when they started calling yeah. the Dead Sea, when, when Wazuki oh, this is or, no yeah, yeah, indeed. At some point, he, they're talking about how to get in there and says there's no way, then Radius is like, yeah, not a great chance, but the demi-humans and Marby will know about it, but they hate humans. But then, yeah, Norris is like, fuck it, let's try it anyway. Then all of a sudden, Norris is like, hey, dudes, I want to come along so that I can confirm the existence of the Frozen Flame. So then Norris enlists in your party. Victory music. Indeed. Norris's occupation is, of course, the Black Wind leader. Black Wind in quotes. His age is 26. His origin is, is of course, poor Xenon from the home world. His height is 5'10". His weight is 137 pounds. His build is average. He is right-handed. His Japanese name is Ishito. I guess they just gave him a English-speaking ass name yeah. <laughs> instead of Ishito because he. They te- it seems like they only tend to keep sort of Japanese coded names in in these games if the character is Japanese coded visually. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this case, Norris is kind of like more European looking. Aryan. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, good point. Uh, his element is yellow. His weapon is gun. His accent is proper English, and he seems to insist on calling Serge Sir as they talk. So I guess he'll say Sir Lynx or Sir Serge along the way. His fortune is dubious, but I think it just has to do with the way this was written. Thank you, Richard. Uh, It says, you work to be more honest, more straight. This world is distorted and crooked. Trying to force your honesty on this crooked world may break you. Beware of that. Cool. So, cool, I guess. I am going to take Norse with me. Norse is going to be in my party now. I've decided. You're in Norse, like, right now in the game or right now when, where you're at in the game right now? Right now. At the moment Norris joins my party, I am going to put him there and substitute Harley out. Because I know for a fact that Harley is going to appear when she is needed. Mm. So I may as well put Norris in here and see what comes up. So mark it down. Chris doesn't like rolling with two blacks. Oh, God. Well, actually, that that is part of the the equation as well. I I don't I like to have a a good variety. I like the, diverse the diversity of elements here. Yeah, I learned that lesson eventually as well. Yes. So then it teleports us to a dock in Termina. Yeah, it, it's like I, you guys have been running all over the fucking place. I'm just gonna send you over here so you can get on with your way. Either Termina Homeworld plays or that Shadow Forest music plays. I forgot to note that they're Fossil different. Valley. Yeah, whatever. It's definitely Fossil Valley. Just a few guards are patrolling around, telling me they're guardian shit. Yeah. So the boat from the military that we're about to get looks hard as fuck. <laughs> it's loaded with cannons. Vandercom would love this thing. Yeah. The guard says it's only for military personnel. Wait, what? Dude, we're supposed to go get the inflatable fucking dinghy thing off to the side. <laughs> yes. What the hell? Quartz's boat is better than this. Yeah. This would have been a great opportunity for us to have a boat for our dudes yeah, to hang out a on. a nice boat. Like, Norris was bragging about this boat requisitioned from the poor military, and it is... It is like it is a lifeboat's lifeboat. Yes, indeed. Well, listen to that one fucking kid in the, in the doodle suit will like oh, it. Oh, yeah. He's going to be really impressed with this thing. Yeah. This, these idiots. Oh, God. Yeah. I was so upset when I saw that it was this. <laughs> so, hey, then we're on the world map. Voyage, yeah. home world. Yeah, we can go do stuff. Sailing, home world. I'm going to go get Draggy, Chris. What are you going to do? I forgot to get Draggy. Hopefully, I can get him later. So, tell me all about Draggy, Eric. Well, Chris, I go back to Mount Pyre. Yes. It's the same guys all around lava here. Lava Boys still? Yeah, Lava okay. Boys. All that stuff. I uh, burned myself instantly because I forget to use the ice breath. Mm-hmm. That was bad. Ran all the way up there. I got a Forge Dragonia. So guess what I got to do to get down to that elevator, Chris? Oh, uh, 
do all the shit again? Yes. Are you, you have serious? To activate all four monoliths, all four ground floor monoliths are, ever again. Are the bosses still there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? Well, no. Some of them. Let's let me read on okay. notes that I did two weeks ago. Okay. So I still don't understand this party order block shifting puzzle. This sucks. Uh, and that's my only note for Fort uh, for Fort Dragonia. <laughs> Congratulations! I don't I'm think do- the bosses were there. I'm pretty sure it was just the puzzles, and then like moving the treasure chests around, and then falling in the right north, well, south, west holes, and then that weird party switching thing that I yeah. still didn't had trouble with. I wonder if we're going to have to actually come here for a story reason later, and I, and I guess you've already done all that shit. That's now. a good question. I didn't because you know you get to that area, and then you hit the black one, and you can go either up or down. Mm-hmm. Down is where you get draggy, so right. I went down. That, that was the egg incubator area, yes. right? But it was all fucked up in yes. another world. So I, I get down there, and I put the big egg inside the very active incubator. Mm-hmm. Then there's a strange sound effect as it hatches. Question: The big egg is what we stole from the dodo birds. Yeah, whatever, it was just right? hanging out in that nest in Fossil Valley in another world. Why do the dodo birds and hey, the... buddy, don't ask this question. Okay, there was a dragon fossil up there. Maybe the fossil ah, shot out an egg. That's true. So reincarnation. Were there, were there more dragons than just the the six dragons at some point? Sir, we've seen dragon stables. You fed them. You got the good prize. Okay, but those are like the descendants of dragons. Those are those are the evolutionary descendants of those guys. Mm. So were, were there more majestic dragons than just the six originally? I guess so, but this is a fort built by man to incubate these things, so perhaps control was wrestled away from natural breeding processes and we started to science them out into some unholy creations. I don't down. think this fort was built by man. I think it was built by the ancient Dragonians. Are the Dragonians dragons? The dragons have little bitty arms. They can't build shit. <laughs> I don't know. It just really tickles me that that's your reason. <laughs> Logically, dragons cannot manipulate concrete or use screwdrivers. They're magic and shit. Okay. Carry oh, on. Oh, yeah. They, they did it with their brains, Chris. Yes. Dennis Quaid killed them all. Raised okay. the earth. Go ahead. Dennis Quaid killed them all. Is that a frequency reference? What the fuck are you talking about? It's Dragonheart, Eric. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I don't know any details of Dragonheart. We talked about that already. I'm the last one. <laughs> okay. So God what happened? It. Okay. So an extremely adorable baby dragon, Draggy, pops out. Draggy says, Arr! Okay. What a good sleep. Good morning. Musical track, Optimism plays. Oh, Optimism. You mean... Uh... Optimism. That's what I mean. That's the track <laughs> that I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, Eden Solaris of Heaven. That's... <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it's called. Solaris Eden of Heaven. Solaris Eden of Heaven. Emperor Cain is down here. Draggy asks where everyone went. His big brother, big sister, kid brother, and little sister all while hopping over the other incubation pads. Quote, where did they all go? Draggy's thing is adding three R's to every R. Yeah. He asks if we're his mother, and then says we look more like father. Draggy sniffles, then asks us if we can take them to father and mother. Ah, so... Sure or no, I can't? Sure, let's do I it. I pick sure. Okay. Victory music. Draggy joined your party. Okay, great. We've got another cute mascot thing in this game i'm glad I'm, I'm so glad that they decided to keep this in the game because i'm sure it's very important this, this is spoilers but if you go to radius's house draggy and like one of the other idiots is there bouncing around it's like a haven for mascots oh is that where they chill yeah god damn it they just give us a fucking boat or, or make uh, you know what actually if they would have made hermit's hideaway our base that yeah, would have been cool too it would be cool hit me with them draggy facts draggy's occupation is a cute baby dragon all he has to do is sit there and be cute like a baby age Zero. You know that. Mm-hmm. Draggy is male, allegedly. Origin is Fossil Valley in another world, which is interesting, too, because he was incubated, or I'm sorry, the, the egg was dropped. What do you call the act of an egg dropping out of, like, the chicken or the whatever? Cloaca excursion. Okay. Initializing fake egg. The word Chris is searching for is overposition, and it means expulsion of the egg from the oviduct to the external environment. Clearly, neither one of you scored well on vocabulary tests. The egg was excursed out of the other dragon's mm. butt or something. Yeah. Ignorance has no limitations. And I it, think then after it's out of mother and into world, that's your origin point. Okay. So it, it was born in, in another, or it was, yeah. So, so was it born in another world, I guess? I guess that's the point. Like, is the birth it hatching? Y- yes, because you can kill it before that and it's fine. Okay. Sounds good. I'll take it. Uh, origin fossil valley another okay height two feet two inches weight thick <laughs> 265 pounds oh my god which might be our heaviest my dense son <laughs> yes draggy my dense son come to me uh his build is tiny he is front left clawed his japanese name is drag child <laughs> which i can see why they changed it 
because that would have a different implications. That's great. His uh, innate element, which makes sense, is red. And his weapon is glove for some goddamn reason. Dragon glove. And his accent is pigeon English, whatever the fuck that means. All his R's are tripled. I think pigeon English is when you like talk like a baby. Yes. Uh, something like that. Initializing fake head. Here I am again educating you fools. A pigeon, or pigeon language, is a grammatically simplified means of communication that develops between two or more groups that do not have a language in common. Typically, its vocabulary and grammar are limited and often drawn from several languages. Draggy's fortune. I just picture, like, the fortune teller, you hit this guy up roughly once every half hour. Yeah. And you bring Dragon, he's like, okay, whoa, why do you have this? Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been difficult for us to actually get these fortunes in-game. Yeah. Because you can't go back there. So that we would have had to do a, full, a whole fortune episode. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Draggy's fortune is seek coexistence with other species, which... That's Both what sides. Draggy is fucking yeah. doing right now, because it has no choice, because the dragons are mostly extinct. So then Draggy joins your party. Draggy is just going to hover around here and go, rrr, 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 I guess. Yeah. Wait, they say they all left the fort and are playing outside, then Draggy takes the elevator out all by himself. Yes. It's really good. Great. And that's all I did at Fort Dragonia. So, uh, go back there, Chris. Yeah, okay, I'll do that at some point in time. Hopefully we have to go back there and I'll do it then. <laughs> So at this point in time, we know that we need to go to Marbule to extend the story, but we have some other things we want to check in on in case this is our last chance. Hi, we're Ellen, Steven, and Mark, hosts of Nice Games Club, the show where nice game devs talk gaming and game development. Topics include programming, design, tools, and more. We also do interviews and one of our game jams. Listen to Nice Games Club wherever you get to your... Wherever you get to your podcast. You get there. <laughs> or at nicegames.club. Hey, Chris, what's the War Rocket Ajax podcast about? Well, Matt, if we were smart, it'd be about murders, but it's actually about comics. War Rocket Ajax, it's not about murders, but it is weekly on the Greenlit Podcast Network. So the next place I went is Goldove. Ostensibly, we're here for some elements. Yes, indeed. Music, Goldove, Homeworld Plays. Yes, it's, it seems like it's mostly the same, but maybe a little bit more muted. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's... Similar to how Arnie has more color in this world, I think some of it's been stripped away from Goldo. Yeah, yeah. The first screen has a huge merchant boat that was not there before. Yeah, the attendant there says that they've been getting a lot of visitors lately, and the other one says that they will not sell their, to their rivals on the mainland. Yeah, she asked if we came from the mainland, and she won't sell to us. I, I don't know if she's talking about the mainland of El Nido or the mainland of the world. That's a good point. But it seems like maybe it's the, it's the mainland of, of, of El Nido. Uh, there's like one of those worker tiger men's there mm-hmm. who still who still talks like a caveman. Yes. He calls his boss lazy. That vendor, ever since the merchant ship arrived, her shop has been put out of business. Quote, why are the outsiders so cold against us demi-humans? When they say outsiders, I'm going to have to assume that means mainland like Xenon. Because it seems like everyone on in El Nido like knows about demi-humans, but isn't just... Yeah. And we get a note later in the Marvel chapter that tells us that when... The Xenon continent forces colonized El Nido, mm-hmm. that the Demi-Humans were driven to these sort of coastal regions like Goldove and Marbule, so maybe that's what they're kind of miffed about. Whereas in, in another world, there seem to be like reasonable relations between them, between the mainland and, and Goldove, but, but not Marbule. So the dynamic there is a little bit different, depending on which world you're in. You go see Doc next? Yeah, he's <laughs> feeling there fucking feeling sorry for himself. As soon as I walk in, this motherfucker is by himself in a chair with his head down on his knees. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't he be? That's Quote, what... medical science has its limits. I do not have the power to save her. Damn it. He seems to be in another situation in which there's yeah. not shit he can he's, do. He's doing this again. This is yes. just his fate to, like, fail to save someone wherever he goes. I know it's not, but I wonder if this is, like, a red herring to, to make you think, oh, maybe that's there's a kid in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A kid. A, that's a, a, good a point. capital letters kid. Uh, his assistant, of course, will not allow us in the back room unless we are family. Hmm. Um, you just remind me of a fantasy I just had. Yeah? We watched Shaun of the Dead the other day. Okay. And my favorite part of it is when they're walking through a back garden and they meet the Bizarro party. Oh. Like people that look like 50% like them. Yeah. And how I would love to, you know, you think kids in that, that doctor's waiting room and you get back there and it's people that look like it's Surge with purple hair. Yeah. And like Korcha is wearing like a full suit instead of a thong. Like just... Yeah, slightly a, different. Yeah, Bizarro things. different party. M- a missed opportunity, Chris. I think I have Doc. You do not, right? Right. Right. Uh, so I'm going to bring him back here. I'm sure that's going to trigger something <laughs> or something stupid, right? Doc will give himself a pep talk. Uh, hey, man, you can do this. Hopefully that's the case. Not it's just like Lena where, where she's like, I don't get this, man. Yeah, where she's like, this is weird. Let me alone at the babysit. Yeah. 
I guess we're eventually going to have to do that with all of our characters that exist in both worlds. The cat lady stops us and says they can only allow family members back there. So do we ever find out who's back there? I don't know. I don't either. So now we can go to that bar area and chill outside the bar at those tables? Yes. Only two people are outside here having a drink. One talks about the spectacle of the sea. The other talks about the same thing, but links it to the inherited lores of the dragon god. And how the sea will take it all away eventually. Yeah. It's a little Dude. depressing. Dude, yeah. yes. Do you remember this... In another gold doll, this is this contrasts with what they were saying there, where that Duke was really worried about them losing their traditions. Yeah. Uh, in in this case, they're talking about inherited lores, whereas in the other one, they were talking about possibly losing their traditions. So, uh, yeah, getting grim. There's a human here that is talking about quote beholden the spectacle of the sea, which is a line I really like. And this dude really loves the El Nido Sea and seems to be happy i guess one of the closest times i've come to meditation is when you're at the beach and you stare out into the infinite horizon of the ocean so yeah i get it yeah that makes sure. sense yes what's out there it will swallow you yeah it wins every fight then we go to the bar yeah let's go inside the bar there's no dwarf here it's a lot different here it's more homely there's no stage the christmas tree and dartboard are still there but it's just two patrons inside one guy talks about the dead sea and how the poisonous coral surrounds the whole area Fact or rumor, get it on Snopes. Yes. <laughs> the other person tells us about the ancient Dragonian artifact called the Dragon Tear, which is enshrined somewhere in this village. Yeah, that might be important. Well, actually, this is a que- this is a genuine question. Will that be important later? I don't th- know. Didn't Harley mention that if we get the Dragon Tear, we can go back? And yeah. I think the other one has blown up, but yeah. who knows? So Who's behind the bar? It's Orcha. That's weird, right? Or- Orcha's running this shit here. Uh, whereas in the another world, he was in Viper Manor, right? Mm-hmm. So, weird. He says this is a great place to kick back. But it's a mighty small shop. But yeah. hey, he's happy with it, right? Sure. So we can't do anything with Orchard. So I still don't know which Orchard we're going to be able no, to recruit. I forgot. Yeah. Then we can go above that shop. The area, this is the element area where you buy element. It mm-hmm. seems to be less cluttered of the knickknack shop. There are also only two people in here instead of three. The Element Shop now has Purify, 99, Infoscope, Fisnegate, Magnegate, Seal All, and Revenge. Yeah, they've got some really good elements here that do the sort of negation things where they'll negate certain elements or change the multipliers. Like you can, I think there's one that reduces element damage by half for the whole You want to use Strategery. Yes, so I got Imbecile, Revenge, and Genius, and maybe a couple others as well. I ordered two of everything. Yes. Chris, are you, is it cool as hell or annoying as shit that all these elements are in a relatively out-of-the-way person and an out-of-the-way place and an out-of-the-way store? I think it's pretty cool because I think it's pretty cool. It, it encourages you to explore these little side nodes here. And it becomes like a rumor of like, oh yeah, you gotta see this lady in this tent. She'll give yeah. you the good purify element. I mean, these types of games are always pretty linear and to give you a couple of options of places to wander around that may reward you just by being able to get extra characters and extra elements is, is pretty good. The other guy here tells us about a side quest. Yes. He's like, yo, y'all ever hear about the star fragment? Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, I haven't. Tell me more. Yes. It's near the Triplet Isles, which I mm-hmm. guess is the El Nido Triangle. Yes. It's the name the locals have for it. Yes. You can find a pretty star-shaped stone there, which is why it's called Star Fragments. It doesn't have much value. It's just pretty. Yes. And this person believes it will bring good luck to its bearer. Chris, do we forget any of these? Do you have any memory of this? No. At this point? No. Me neither. He also tells us there is a place at the triangle below the sea where there is a layer of air and we can walk around like it's normal. Yes. Which seems like a line you write after you make that sequence later and don't explain anything. Yes, that's true. I guess this is, this is uh, in addition to the guy, the, the poor soldier, this is our second hint that we can go there. Yeah. It's someone else pointing you in the direction of... Although it's interesting, at this point, you don't know if that's where, if like that or Marbule are your destination A yeah, or not. That's true. Uh, next, I went to the residential tower. Yes. With Matcha. Mm-hmm. She wonders if we are Korsh's friends and mm-hmm. she invites us to make ourselves at home because Matcha rules. Yep. Uh, downstairs, Mel has left a note that says she's not home. And upstairs, Korcha doesn't know who the hell Serge is and tells us to stop walking in people's homes. Yeah, it's a fair thing. He's still sitting at his desk. Same sort of posturing there. And. There's always, like, one character in every JRPG of this era that's like, hey, that makes the joke of, hey, don't, don't just walk into people's houses. Of course, yeah, right. Don't yeah. smash my pots. Yeah. Don't steal my pot. Yes. Up on top, the zipline kid is still out here grifting us. Yes, indeed. And the only place left to go is the Dragon God tent. 
Yeah, the shaman's place, but we can't go in because we are, quote, foreigners. No, the bouncer, not the bouncer, but a bouncer says foreign born people can't enter for, quote, reasons we will not explain, which to me seems like a failure of fiction and lore. <laughs> yeah, we didn't want to write lines here yet, maybe. Yeah. TLDR. Yes, it was pretty easy to get there before. But Did you do anything else in Goldove? That's it. Tell me about El Nido Triangle. Well, Chris, it's just wave noises, man. Yes. There are exactly three stone mounds in a triangular pattern. They're covered in flowery moss with shades of red, green, and purple flowers. In the center of this non-static, the textures are shifting a bit, water lies an almost glowing area where the water is a bit brighter. Mm -hmm. When we push our boat over there, an option appears. Go in. Yes. No. Are the options. I choose yes, because I want to play this video game. Yeah, of course. Let's go in there. Fuck, dude. We're under the sea. Yeah, we're in like this uh, aquarium area, but we can breathe underwater for some goddamn reason. New music, Jellyfish Sea. I just have El Nido Triangle. It is a gentle piano tune with ethereal synths that act as support. It seems to take some cues from Mario 64, Dire Dire Dock's level of serene yet threatening underwater vistas. Yes, it's very soft, and it goes well with this area, because we we literally are inside of just like a, it it feels like a designed coral reef. Yes, it's a rainbow coral reef with a ton of different colored varieties of fauna that I do not know the name of. I walked over to greet a school of angelfish, but oh no, it's not a fun school of fish, they're enemies. No, they're called schoolmates. (laughs) Yes. And uh, n- nothing fancy about these enemies. They're just lots of little fish that do stuff to you. They look like angelfish. They all have a yellow face except for one up top, which seems to have a red face. Oh, didn't notice that. They just zip at people for a physical slap. When they dodge, the whole school separates, which looks cool. Yeah. So the battlefield's nice. It's a large chunk of the ocean with an infinite horizon, and there's schools of fish swimming around. There's rays of light penetrating some of the surface, and there's exactly one moray eel poking its head out of the side of the field. Mm. Never fight that thing. It's just there. The only other enemy down here is called Puffy. Yeah, it's like, a, of course, a puffer fish. These are pretty tough. Yeah. Like, I, I thought maybe the fir- th- these were the first enemies I encountered, and I was like, ooh, maybe I'm not supposed to be here yet. Yeah. Because they have a, a, an ability called Needlework, it I think. Fills radius with 172 damage. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a lot. Really fucks you up. Uh, but you, n- nonetheless, you can proceed through this area. It's giant eyes expand when it, when it attacks. I think it's a nice animation. Yes. So there's a very clear path here, and we use it to take a ladder, question mark, down to a screen where I kill more local wildlife and step on coral and probably the kind that you're not supposed to step on. Yeah, the ladder's like (laughs) like designed, like etched into this. Like Like, this is an ancient area that just got taken over by coral or the fact that it was a video game and you have to signpost what the fuck a ladder is. Yeah, also true. Also, it's been weird too because like there's a couple of people that we've met that know the secret to this place, yet Mm -hmm. no one has... Why is any of this like this? Give me a reason, Chris. <laughs> Rationalize something. Come up uh, with something. Uh, Figure it out. I don't know. I, I was led. Damn to, it, Chris. I was led to believe that the El Nido Triangle was important. Yeah. Because we've heard about it a lot of times throughout both worlds. But it seems like it's just side quest fodder. Maybe the other I got ones. It. I yes. know why we can breathe. You ever see the abyss? Uh, yes. They breathe liquid oxygen at some point oh, in that. Oh, cool. Where you, it's like the sensation of drowning, but you actually breathe. I'm not sure if the science checks out on that, but oh. Ed Harris lived through it. Uh, so. Mario water level. Yeah, Mario water level. There yes. you go. Uh, Mario yes. holds his breath, though. He's got a meter. Mario has no meter. Mario holds his, his breath indefinitely in original Mario Brothers. Oh, of course. And, yeah. and three. Of course. You're right. Yahoo! Maybe in the 3D ones, he has a meter. So eventually, we heard about this, We uh, and we find it. We found this star fragment at the bottom. Mm-hmm. You can also pick up, I think, a couple of There's chests of mithril. Mithril, the yeah. element mithril. Which is good to have right now. And Especially if you want to experiment with characters and build weapons for them. Yeah, and you, there's no one that drops the mithril for quite some time, yeah. so you're in good shape. I, this is a weird place. Yeah, it's weird. I thought maybe there was going to be some significance here, but... No, it's just basically just two screens. You're in and out in about 20 minutes. Yeah. Not too much side area-ing. I think you're in and out in like two minutes. It's 20 minutes if you're taking notes and two minutes if you're playing. I got a lot of fights, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, actually, there were three enemies congregated on the star fragment box, so I had to fight three in a row. Yeah, they're all kind of clustered around that little cave. But then we drive our little shit boat into Sky Dragon Isle. Yes, this is like kind of a ruins area covered yeah. in lush vegetation. But it's a nice tropical island vibes, and there's no music. It's just waves. Yeah, it's nice. This is my first time here. It's like a jungle, and what we happen to be traveling on a neat cliff above it all. Yeah. Like, thanks for fast-tracking us here and skipping that day-long journey. <laughs> yeah. So at the bottom, after one screen, is some kind of vegetation-covered pyramid. Two people are here. One says they were warned not to come here, but decided to come anyway. Quote, we adventurers get all fired up when they tell us not to go somewhere. Yeah, not a good policy, but I, yeah. Yeah, I get it. The other person said the sky dragon usually resides here, but some kind of gigantic monster moved in after it disappeared. It took away the star fragment this person had worked so hard to get, Mm -hmm. but it would have killed them. 
had they not forfeit their star fragment, Chris. Yes, of course. And also one of those dumbass goober monsters in the back corner chasing a bug around. I think oh, this is funny. Yeah, the Wobbuffet thing. Yeah. 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 From Shadow Forest. I, I would like to think they had just previously explored Shadow Forest and captured one, and that's their pet that they just take it around yeah. and chase flies. They are adventurers, after all. Yeah. Like it, it, it exterminates pests for them like a cat. So then we go up to the second screen and ascend this very, very steep staircase yeah, that reminds me of like Aztec ruins or something. Yes, it looks very South American, Central American type thing. Yes. There's vegetation growing on each side. The top of the screen, a thing in a space helmet runs the hell away. <laughs> Harley wonders what that was. The same flock of birds from Viper Manor flies by. Yes. There's uh, one guy up here. Yeah, this is like a huge open area, oh, yeah, so like our a, character models like are scaled down to very small. But the pyramid, it doesn't come to a point. It's like a big platform at the top. It's yeah. that kind of pyramid. Mm-hmm. One guy up here tells me a big monster is here. Yes. He won't attack you, though, if you don't have a star fragment. So he's in the clear. Yes. Chris, what do we got? We've got a star fragment, of course. We do. I wonder what would have happened had we come here without that. Probably nothing, because you have to go, in order to initiate this, you have to go to this treasure chest in the middle on like a small stone altar. Oh, okay. And click that, and I guess it would just be empty otherwise, but... When you click that, a giant fucking Martian yes. runs out. <laughs> and 50X says, size version of this thing. Yes, and says, give me star fragments. Is the star child from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah, basically. A battle begins is versus Mega Starkey. I mean, it, it's seen as chrome and reflective, and also it's holding a huge space gun. Yeah, it's it's very it's a space gun, Chris. Yeah, it's a Jetsons gun. Norris ba- just barely has gunpowder. We know that he has a clip in it. Yeah, of course. The so, guy screams, "No, it's here!" and runs away <laughs> as the huge thing begs for the star. It's really good. Yeah, uh, this thing's got a ton of HP. It took me a while to kill it. But you know what else you can get from it, Chris? What's that? Trap an Ultra Nova. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, fuck! I missed that. I did that. Congrats. However. Even though I use Diminishing Imbecile to make it an easy fight, it only casts Ultra Nova when it's in critical in case you're as dumb as I am and kept defending through turn move cycles infinitely. Oh, okay. I was hurting and out of heals with my one, but it was a very enjoyable victory when I did. Yeah, it, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't a complete pushover. So once this thing is defeated, we meet the real monster. It which shrinks. Is just a tiny version of yeah. this thing, a tiny alien man. And he starts running away with a star fragment. He's screaming, whoopee, star fragment mine. <laughs> That I am playing, it tells me to catch him with the X button. What is this game? He runs all over the place and it would be much easier to catch him if the text boxes with na 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 weren't popping up all over the running path. And I wonder if that was intended to be part of the challenge. Do you know what happened to me? What happened to I was using this controller here. Chris is holding up an 8-bit 2 Super Nintendo Pro controller? Yes, and I was pressing the X button. You uh, dumbass. The Super Nintendo X button, which in my case should be B. And uh, I was like, why can't I catch this guy? Uh, But then I realized I'm I'm stupid. So here we go. Congratulations, son. I got it. And he explains... <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> this fucking game, dude. So once we catch him, he explains that he came from a far away star. Yes. And his ship crashed. And these star fragments are parts of his ship. Yes, his ship turned to fragments after that crash. Harley then, for some reason, tells him his ship may be intact in this other world. Yes. Without asking that what any of this means, Starkey says he will come with us. <laughs> yeah, in my case, it was Radius that told him, because I had already subbed I mean, in Norris. When I told him, you think you would have said, so, but am I in the other world? Yeah, good Did I question. Did I crash? Would... That's a big leap to think there's going to be another crash starship in this other world. Well, I like, mean... I think you're just better off getting the fucking star fragments, dog. Starkey is immune to the events of, like, Surge's death and Lynx's... You don't know that. ...minglings. Butterfly effect, man. That's... Oh, He's, he's, like I, what if the planet's rotation was altered 0.07%? That ship wouldn't crash. I don't think the butterfly f- effect applies once you like get outside the planet's atmosphere. Oh, so the game where we're trans dimension hopping and turning into Catman and beating a sprig in Hell World, you suddenly think that atmospheric conditions don't impact space travel of crashing Martians and non sequitur laser guns, Chris? <laughs> well, when you put it that way, <laughs> maybe so. Uh, so yeah, Starkey joined the party. Victory music. Yeah. Thank you, Starkey. You're here. We have Starkey now. Chrono Cross is shoving characters into your hands like the tissue people on the streets of Tokyo. <laughs> Here, you, fucking I, take it. Take I thought, it. Take I thought this you were going to say the, uh, the Vegas guys. The Vegas people, they will offer them to you, but when you, when roaming the streets of Tokyo in multiple locations, they were physically put into my hands. When I was in New York City, the and this was during the holidays, so there was like a lot of tourists there, uh, there were, I believe, Buddhist monks of some sort. Were, were they Buddhist or Hare, Hare Krishna? people i'm not sure okay. uh but they were doing the same thing with like some sort of prayer beads or something it's all the same shit hooker cards or prayer beads 
The best part of Yakuza is they will, if you even touch those people, they'll add those tissues to your inventory. Oh, yeah. That happens in Zero, right? Yeah, yeah. it happens in all of them. Yeah, okay, great. So, Starkey's in our party. Uh, and, and, of course, like we said before, there have not been very many opportunities to interface with all these fucking characters that they're, that they're yeah. doling out. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe if there would have been some sort of nice, long, longer enemy-ridden dungeon that we could go through during this section, it would have been fun to experiment with these guys, but that's not happening. I bet that was planned. Like, I bet Earth Dragon, all these aisles were supposed to be much grander than they actually were, probably. Maybe, yeah. So, Starkey, his occupation is a stray gray, in quotes. Gray's the popular alien, uh, the uh, yeah. slit eyes. Yeah, um, that's true. His age is unknown, male. His origin is another planet. Get it? His height is 211. His weight is 11 pounds. His build... 211. <laughs> his build is alien. He is ambidextrous. His Japanese name, which is right on the nose, is Starchild. And his element is white. His weapon is a gun. Mm-hmm. And he also speaks in pidgin English. And he also talks in third person. And most of his vowels are elongated, where like A becomes like five or six A's. Yeah. So... Congrats. Uh, I think I saw one of your screenshots that you're using Starkey now. Yes, he's a permanent member of my party. Okay. (laughs) I'm looking forward to that particular bit in this podcast. Yes. At one point, I was like, how many dumbass weirdo characters can we possibly get? And also, I would like to only use them. So am I going like hard cannon and you're going... uh... Ultimate dumbass. Okay, ultimate dumbass. I'm going to be as as dumb as I want to be. Eric, (laughs) Eric, the ultimate dumbass, as dumb as I want to be, volume three. Six. (laughs) Okay. So his fortune. Mm Mm-hmm is uh, the fortune teller says, my word, you are fated to make a grave oh, choice. I thought it was just my word, you're fated. <laughs> my word, you are fated, son. <laughs> Go to sleep. You are fated to make a grave choice. Whatever will be selected will be decided from the actions of those around you. So, uh, y- yes. <laughs> sure, I guess. Yes, but also the NPC here that was walking around that was terrified. Yeah. Uh, he gives us the our favorite Martian frame, if you speak to him again. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right about that. Which is a steel. It's got red laser lines around it, complete with a 2D Starkey sprite cursor. Yeah, cool. Really good. <laughs> uh, I'm, did you switch to that since you're all, all in on Starkey? Of course. Okay, good. Starkey has a minor side quest that you can... Minor? This is major, well, in my I, opinion, dude. This I, is my favorite part of the game. I, I fi- <laughs> This shit's I, fucked up. I, actually, this is major for both of us in terms of the, the mechanics of how this is working. Where's so. the side quest at, Chris? So we have to go back to Arnie. Homeworld. Homeworld Arnie. We can't, of course, train... Arnie Homeworld plays. Yes, we cannot return to the other one at this point in time. So uh, we Starkey go... Starkey has to be in your party. Yeah, Starkey has to be in your party, and you go up to the sawfish, the vibrating, ge- gestating, yes. whatever the sawfish. has been alive in yeah. twitching and breathing outside for a month. Yes, indeed. He asked the dude where he caught it. And the guy's like, yeah, I caught this at the El Nido Triangle. And then, then the guy wonders why. He's like, why do, you, why do you have a fishbowl on your head? And why are you blue? Are you okay? Yeah, the only reason Starkey talked to him is when you approach that fish, the center of it glows blue. And then Starkey's like, oh, shit. Yeah. What Chris said about, like, why is your face blue? This is A-plus local fucking drunk guy question. Yeah, that's true. Like, hey, man. Like, he doesn't. He's not repulsed by the fact there's an alien talking to him. He's like, why is your face blue? <laughs> it's two o'clock on Wednesday. I'm just out here with my fish. It's still alive. Perhaps. Who's this kid who's been next to me for a week? God. You seen Surge? <laughs> <laughs> so Starkey knows that blue is fine with him, and then he levitates up to the fish, which now has something glowing inside of it, by says, the way. He says, don't try this at home. Yes. Starkey then actually asks permission to take back something which belongs to him. And he says, well, if it's your, be my guest. Yeah. Then he either like climbs a nearby fish rack or levitates. I'm pretty sure he levitates. Okay. Yeah. And then he like pulls the pistol out using some kind of non-invasive surgery technology. (laughs) Yes. The fish continues to twitch after Starkey has conducted his business. Starkey asks if he is supposed to say something grateful. Correct. You are welcome. Yes. And the dude claps back and says, that's his line. Yes. And then we get a pretty well implemented joke. Yeah. Starkey learned thanks, and we actually even get the little noise that you get. Yeah, and then it, like thanks is in pink text. Yeah, it's f- funny. What the fuck? But who cares, right? Is a follow up to that. And apparently Norris can also equip this gun. Yes, exactly. So I immediately gave Put Norris, Norris the Norris. plasma pistol, and it's it, it's great. You'd imagine Norris being like, "What the? Who are you guys? <laughs> what is going on with you? People? Why did you just pull a, an alien pulled a fish out of this hovel that we just traveled? Yeah, to? Yeah, keep in mind that Norris joined like two hours ago, yeah, right? And we already <laughs> taken him on some journey to these dumbass places. 
Yes. This is also where I noticed Starkey's idle animation is doing a handstand and rocking back and forth on his fishbowl helmet. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. That's better than Skelly's rotating head, I guess. Yeah. So, you want to make any updates to the power rankings, Eric? I want to put Starkey up there, man. Okay, I want so to put Starkey on the board. Get let's so refresh. Out of that our, shit. Uh, our, our running list, we have a, a running list of the top three characters who are our favorite characters as we go through this podcast. Right now, the list is number three is Zoa, who we haven't seen in a while. Number two is Skelly, of course, our man Skelly. Number yeah. one is Harley, who is electric in every scene that she appears in. I want to keep that one and two solid, but I want to take Zoa out of this shit and put Starkey in. I want my two foot six alien. Zoa out and Starkey in. So I'm, it's I mean, har- like, Skelly's fading, right? Because yeah. he's not present, but I still think he has enough power to maintain a spot. It maintain his number two spot? Yeah. Okay. He earned it. I'm for it. So we're going to go with number one, Harley. Number two, Skelly. Number three, Starkey. Stay tuned to figure out what happens next. Because this is the end of the episode, Eric. Okay, Chris. Let's check in with the real net. Initializing real net. Alter Impulse says, I named Draggy Druggy. <laughs> Quick Stacular says, poor Draggy without mommy. I know the feels. And then Quick Stacular says, the egg was laid, question mark, which is a good point. Like, was this yeah, egg right? laid? I think it was transdimensionally birthed from the bone dragon. SSD just says, maybe it was an egg sodas. Can you uh, ban? Do we, do we ban? Right click, ban. <laughs> okay, here's, here's the comment. This is the best comment I think ever, maybe. Uh, SSD just says, wow, late term dragon abortions were not a topic I expected oh. today's podcast. Yeah, we went there, didn't we? Yeah, Squistacular says, I choked on my wine when, <laughs> when Eric said shit boat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad boat. <laughs> it is. Uh, Quistacular says, Eric the dumbass for Prez. <laughs> SSD just says, rickety crickety and dead tooth best s- are the best Chrono Cross party members. Prove me wrong. Uh, SSD Ninja photoshopped my face onto Zorak. Yeah, sure. I still don't know who that is, but... Uh, it, it's the Mantis from, from Space Ghost. Yeah, okay. I've seen, I've seen the episode about Space Ghost where he interviews Tricky and there's a big jar of piss next to it. <laughs> yeah, Space Ghost is good. Okay. Uh, thanks, RealNet. We appreciate you joining us tonight. And uh, please bring more good shit posty comments next time because that's our lifeblood. Stay tuned for the outtakes... This episode is a production of Retrograde Amnesia recorded on today, November 3rd, 2020. Thank you, Mark, Shepherds. for the intro track. You're welcome, Chris. Find us on Twitter at Retro Amnesia Pod. Subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you get your podcasts. Whoever gave us a three-star review out there, you're a hater. Uh, more importantly, tell a friend about the podcast. Email the show at RetrogradeAmnesiaPodcast at gmail.com. And if you like us, go support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash RetroAM. We will produce additional content for you and for you only. But anyway, uh, until next time, yes, Eric. Yes, we will kill God. Yes, and now you may go back to slumber. Yeah, we have a three-star review out there. There's no text to it. I was hoping that it was going to be like, hey, you guys are too political. But oh, okay, great. It, it, I'm specifically waiting for that review so I can frame it and hang it on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, go ahead. I, I, I can't even think of what it is. I forgot. No, you said I thought of a really good miniseries thing. Yeah, if a game to add to whatever it is, but oh. fucking forgot it. Oh, you forgot so, it J- just now? No, earlier today I was like, shit, no one's even suggested. Oh, uh, Skies of Arcadia. I thought that was long. Oh. <laughs> I, I just thought of it. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I look I, at my phone, but I'm not looking at my phone. So. I feel like I looked that up and it's longer than that. Okay. Maybe because I know that game, similar to Xenogears, has like a very yeah. dedicated, passionate fan base. Yeah. And you can play that on GameCube you and You want to play the GameCube. Yeah. Uh, GameCube or Dreamcast, but you want to play GameCube. Okay. Um, anyway, cool. The bat random encounters are tweaked pretty good in that one. You're already the cool uncle who's like, you know, all that stuff's bullshit, right? Yeah, except for I'm the dad, so I wonder what kind of... I wonder how I'm going to uniquely scar my children. (laughs) I'll just do drugs like two years earlier than what I have. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. What the hell are we... Okay, so... (laughs) Chris's woke kids. Yeah. Um... (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) 